Hi everyone, Dave Rigotti here presenting for Segment Growth Masters. We're going to be talking about how product data can really supercharge ABM and enterprise growth, a topic that's kind of really near and dear to my heart. So let's go ahead and dig in. So as I said, I'm Dave Rigotti. I'm a co-founder at a company called Inflection.io. We like marketing automation and we connect into CRMs just like you would be expecting to for like a HubSpot or Marketo. What makes us so really different is we're a segment destination. So you can create a lot of marketing campaigns and workflows and emails right off of your segment data. So we're inflection.io. Before this role, I was the head of marketing at a company called Visible. And then I ran a company's marketing for Marketo for a number of years. And I've done the whole speaking circuit on account-based marketing and kind of really excited today to blend together two things I've been really studying for a long time and really passionate about, which is ABM and, and enterprise demand gen and product-led growth and kind of what I've learned over the last five years or so, sort of blending the two together and what the best in class companies are doing to, to really maximize enterprise pipeline. So we're going to go through a few different things. One, um, just why even have an ABM motion at a product-led company when everyone's talking about bottoms up and free to pay conversion, you know, where, what is the place of ABM? How is ABM just way different at product-led orgs and how do you need to approach it differently? And I think even, you know, why is it really great at, at product-led companies? It can be so much more powerful at a product-led company than a traditional SaaS company. And I'll explain why. Three, product data as the ultimate first-party intent data. I've been like over on a hunt for, for a decade on like what's the best intent data. And it turns out it was like your users the whole time. So we're going to talk about how you can maximize that data to as this uh, rich intent source. Four, how to personalize outreach to executives or people who are actually going to be signing the contracts. And then finally, expanding across divisions of existing customers to land kind of even more, more pipeline. So why even have uh, an ABM motion and just kind of where does it fit? I, I think this, this tweet, I can't even believe it. It's, a, it's almost three years old already. I think it really captures it, the, the kind of need for ABM really well. When Slack sold only to, sold to Salesforce, only 8% of Slack's revenue was coming from free to pay conversion. And it was decreasing as, uh, as they were growing. And I see this all the time when I, when I talk with companies that are, you know, they're product-led companies. Every single company has a really robust sales and enterprise marketing motion. Oftentimes they're really separate between the product led motion and the account based marketing or the, the direct sales motion that really should be blended together. And we'll, I'll show you some plays that you can run later in this, in this talk where you can use the, the best of product led to do a fantastic ABM that you wouldn't be able to do to otherwise. But when I talk with a lot of startups too, they get to like, 1 million in ARR, maybe two, maybe 3 million in ARR, and things start to slow down. You've got these initial adopters of your product, you're, you're driving free to pay to conversions, things are looking really great, you've raised your A round, but things start to slow down. And you need to start to break out of those that are just kind of organically finding your product and signing up for it and converting and really start to land some of these bigger enterprises, these bigger companies, and instead of selling one, two, three, or five seats, really selling like a hundred seats or 500 seats, or maybe even a thousand seats of your, of your product. And that's really, you need to get really good at that. And those that start to get really good at it around 1 million ARR, I've seen be much more successful than ones that don't kind of ever really figure it out, especially by 3 million ARR. I, I see it just the kind of magical point where you really do need to start thinking about account-based marketing and direct sales and how can you do it really, really well? Um, but of course, ABM is super different at product-led organizations. In a traditional SaaS go-to-market motion, ABM is all about acquisition. And that's like certainly true for PLG. There's, there's, you need to have an acquisition component to, to all of your marketing. But this, this is how I did ABM when I was doing ABM at Marketo and at Adobe. I was just 100% focused on on net new, net new pipeline, SQLs, um, feeding the sales team that was just focused on landing new customers. It's how I ran ABM and it's, it's honestly how, 
how most companies run and, and most teams run ABM. But at a product-led organization, it needs to be a little bit different. So you need to think about acquisition, but you also really need to kind of understand and think about expansions. Now, you know, most revenue from a, at a product-led organization is going to come from expanding your current customers. And when I did ABM, I didn't do this at all. Um, I literally spent 0% of my time or my budget on expanding customers. And frankly, it's, it's probably my number one mistake I made when I was doing ABM was not focusing enough on this. And I, I should have done instead of 100% acquisition and 0% expansion, I probably should have been more like 70% acquisition, 30% expansion, maybe even 50-50. I guarantee you it's way easier to take a company that's spending $1 million with you and converting them to a $2 million a year customer than to go find another $1 million a year customer. And so, you know, I think this is my number one mistake. And um, if I were to go back, I would do it again. I would really think about PQLs. I would think about expansion pipeline. I would think about my account based marketing lists of what are those customers that are going to be the most likely to upgrade instead of before when I would just remove customers from my ABM list. So I think, you know, recap at, at product led companies, ABM really needs to be thinking about expansion, not just the acquisition side. Course comes with a couple of different different tweaks and different terms and different understanding of of your metrics as well. So, you know, certainly we understand TAM, the total addressable market. We generally think about it as you know the TAM that you're you're kind of going after as a whole. I really like to think about customer TAM. So when we think about you know what's a customer going to pay for your product, we really think about or tend to think about that initial contract. Great, we got a a six figure deal. Uh, six-figure annual deal. I like to really think about when I'm when I'm doing EBM and when I'm thinking about expansions. What's this customer TAM? A uh, customer that's paying you hundred thousand dollars a year for your software, but that's all they'll ever pay. You know, probably should be tweeted differently from a company that's paying you hundred thousand dollars a year. But you know, they, maybe it's Microsoft and they have ability to pay a million dollars a year for your product or more. So I really start to bring in customer TAM or expansion TAM into the into the equation when I'm doing commerce marketing for for PLG. The other is is NRR, net recurring revenue. I think I had such an underappreciation for NRR when I was doing ABM. It certainly it's become more of a mainstream metric these last few years. But um, if you can get to over 100% NRR, that means your existing customers are paying you more every year. You could never acquire a customer, a new 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 customer and you're still going to grow. You get to 100% NRR, you're controlling your own destiny. If you can get to 110%, you're in like escape velocity territory. Like you're on your path to an IPO for sure at that point. It doesn't matter what really happens with the, you know, the market as much or competitors. You really just need to kind of just stay focused on that metric and you're going to get there. So when we think about, about PLG, we tend to think a lot about free to pay conversion, but I think one huge magic multiplier when you're doing PLG and especially when you're thinking about ABM and expansions, it's just NRR. And I, I see the best PLG companies be really focused on NRR. And again, if I were to go back and kind of redo some of the stuff in my career, I would be screaming from the rooftops what our NRR number is and really taking charge at thinking about, hey, how can we go from 90% retention and 90% NRR, NRR to 95, or could we even get it to 100? Because if we do, that really changes the game for growth and for just the kind of impact and value that you're getting out of your, your marketing. Now, let's shift gears a little bit on what I've learned and some of the best plays that I've seen uh, really drive ABM at product led companies. So the, the first is really thinking about your, your onboarding. You cannot upgrade or upsell or expand a customer that never onboards. And I am very much guilty in my career of spending too much time thinking about just getting the deal done and not enough time about, is this customer realizing value? Have they realized value yet? What are we gonna do to help them realize value? So I think even if you're in demand gen or EBM rule and onboarding isn't part of your charter, you gotta dig in, you gotta learn a little bit more about it and see if there's ways to, to make improvements. The biggest thing that I've seen companies do the most is 
implement onboarding that kind of looks like this, which is move from sending an email every 24 hours on your onboarding to sending an onboarding emails based on what they've actually done in your product. So if they haven't done a step number two, instead of sending them an email the next day about step number three, send them an email again that says, hey, reminder, you haven't done step number two. Or if they've already done step number three, don't even email them about step number three, just put them on the next next best action. So again, like, and then even weave into this, like sending alerts to CSMs, if a key enterprise hasn't, um, enterprise customer has missed a step, really get smart about how you're driving onboarding. I think this is such a low hanging piece of fruit when you're thinking about expansions and ABM and, and trying to improve your NRRs, move onboarding to be based on their users product activity data, obviously using the data that you're getting from, from segment to do this. And it's a huge, it's a huge unlock. So we see this with, with our customers, they must always start here, even in the demand gen roles, they really think about how can we improve our onboarding? Because again, you cannot upgrade or upsell or cross sell a customer that never onboards. Next is this. I, I love these emails and we, we all get them. These are, you know, recap emails. One of our customers called Stack Moxie, they send theirs every, every week. So instead of, it's not every year, not even every month, it's every week. And you know what? The marketing team owns this email. It wasn't a product that created it. Marketing team created this email in a, in a day. And uh, what they understood is that this is a fantastic way to help customers understand the success that they're having with your products. Or another way to think about that is help customers understand all the value they're getting out of your product. And the key to making these emails really great is to get them to executives that are the signers and that aren't even using your product. So get to that VP, get to that C-level uh, person in your value chain, add them to the email. They're gonna get an email every week or every month and they're gonna see wow, the team's really using the software. It's really doing all this stuff that I didn't even realize. And what the best recap emails, what they do is they dynamically change out the CTA based on the data that's being collected. So this, this example here, you know, this, this account looks really good. They're using, they're using the software well. They have a bunch of active users using the manual runs feature. So it's like, hey, leave a GT review. But if it, if it only had one or two active users, the CTA would change and say, hey, add more, more of your team members here. So not only is it, is it a great way to get to executives, but it's also a great way to drive the better actions and the next best action for your product. And again, like the more executives see this stuff, the easier it is, it's greasing the wheels, the easier it is for the CSM or the renewals team or the AE or whoever drives those upgrade conversations. They're not going to have to spend all this time talking about, you know, what they've done in, in their product over the last quarter or over the last year. The executives aren't going to know. They're going to see it. Maybe they're going to opt in and request an upgrade. So I see these emails, even though they tend to be thought of as product emails, I see them really perform really well being driven from marketing and driving more revenue and more expansions than, than customers predicted in the, in the beginning. The next like ultimate first party intent data, man, I spent so long in my career thinking about intent data and how to arm our BDR team with intent data. I, I like probably went mad. <laughs> I probably, probably am still mad. So I think when you're thinking about intent data again, like what people are doing in your product, in your app, you know what features they're using, you know, when they last logged in, you know, when they've done all this stuff, it's like not even intent data. It is like actual, just like usage data. It is a gold mine of first party data. And so when I was running a company's marketing at Marketo, I spent so much time thinking about how can I arm my BDR team to be more effective? How can I take, we had 80 BDRs or something like that. And I used to think a lot about how can I take them from generating five opportunities a month to six opportunities per month? And if I can take them to just generate one more new opportunity per month, we're generating 80 new opportunities that month. Like we're crushing our goals. We're going to be fine. And so I used to think so much about BDR efficiency, but I used to always think about it from the acquisition side, never the, the expansion side. And so I think it's really important to think about, you have this gold mine of product data, this gold mine of data from, from segment. How do you, how do you arm the BDR team with that? 
you got to map it into Salesforce. There's a number of ways to do that. Go, go map the data in, go build lists for the BDRs, go uh, create product led sales plays for them, create a, a PQL score if you don't have it for, you know, just for expansions. And think, think about this and, and treat it with the same amount of, of effort and as urgency as you would on an inbound lead and your inbound lead scoring and your, your inbound motion. Because again, it's like, it is so much easier to get customers to upgrade than to acquire net new customers, especially in this market where there's not a lot of inbound demand happening and, you know, ad prices are way higher than it was five years ago. So really think about how are you converting people over, you know, certainly you can do this for free to paid. But also for that expansions that we talked about, taking a customer from 100,000 to 200,000 or, or more. Now, my last tip for being like just a, a, a total student on data and really maximizing the, this like intent or usage data that you have is get your product data, get the segment data in something where you can start to visualize it and understand it like an amplitude mix panel or your BI platform of, of choice. Build that understanding of, of what is happening in your product. Again, just like you would do for inbound, like you're spending this time as a, as a marketer, as an inbound person or an ABM person, thinking through the funnels from first touch to MQL to SQL to pipeline, like go build that understanding of, of expansions, have that same methodology, that same, that same process. I really start to think about okay, where is the drop-off happening? What can we do from a product team? I mean, as a marketing team without having to involve the product team or touch the product to go drive that expansion. There's, trust me, there's a lot you could do. <laughs> there's a lot you could do. And I think this is just like a huge opportunity for customer marketing and lifecycle marketing to frankly be on the same level and treated in the, in the same way as like a demand generation marketer. You know, typically revenue marketing, demand marketing, they're seen as, as a bit of the stars in a, in a SaaS marketing team because they're bringing in the revenue, they're bringing in the growth and customer marketing and lifecycle marketing might be seen more as like advocacy or just a good thing we need to do. This is um, a, a fantastic opportunity for customer marketing in particular to really show Hey, here's, here's what we can really get through more investment in expanding our customers and in customer marketing and really be thinking on the same levels as like a demand generation marketer in terms of, you know, metrics and expansion, TAM, ex, ex, expansion PQLs and, and converting that, converting customers over to, to even bigger, better customers. Now I'm going to do show two plays that I've seen work just really well, two ABM plays that are pretty unique with product-led organization. There's obviously tons of different plays you could go to. And with traditional ABM, you might do something like uh, exclusive events or wine parties. You can certainly do all of that when you're at a product-led organization, but getting to executives is, is super important. And there's one really cool way you can do that as a product-led organization that really isn't possible otherwise. And this is using the product data to go get to the signer or the executive of the team. This is a screenshot from uh, a customer of ours called Hyper Context. People use their, their managers use their product to manage kind of one-on-ones and, and meetings. And they can use their data at the individual level, as you can see here, and then roll it up into the executive. Outreaches to executives are like pretty cool. Like, hey, um, you know, your, your team is using our product. I would love just to, to chat with you, or I would love to tell you about our new premium features. They're just kind of, they're cold or they're just like, hey, want to chat. There's not really providing any value or any reason for this person to kind of get, get on the call. By utilizing segment in your product data, you have the in, the in to these, to these executives. I love pitches that are like, hey, your team is using Kuiper Contacts to manage meetings. Can I get you 30 minutes to show you the manager's dashboard on how you can better manage your team? Or... Something like, you know, hey, 15 of your managers are using Hyper Context to manage one-on-ones. Would you like to know who's running effective one-on-ones? I've got a great dashboard I can show you and it's no charge, you know. What a great way to get, to break in with executives 
um, that are the signers, the ones that really hold the purse strings. And even if it's not an upgrade conversation, that's fine. You're getting them into the product. They're seeing the value. And oftentimes, you know, that's a great opportunity to do a little, little pitch of their premium features that they don't have yet. But come renewal, you know, they're going to understand what they're getting out of this much more than if they, you know, if they never even heard about it. So I think use the data and be really thoughtful about like, how are you getting to these executives using your product data? The next is expanding across divisions with existing customers. Again, I think this comes back to the TAM conversation. If you're selling into very large organizations, you can think of like a Microsoft, you know, there's probably dozens of divisions at, at Microsoft. If you sell one, one division, I don't, for me, that was like the end of ABM. I was like, great. Like, you know, we sold a $50,000 contract to Microsoft. Great. We're done. But really like we've only captured like one twentieth of the TAM or maybe even like one one hundredth or 1% of the TAM for that company. So if you're, 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 you're breaking into these big companies, like you've, you've got the in, you've got the permission. Now you have the, the usage data, like go, go do something with this. I think this is just like one of the most under appreciated, underutilized plays in account based marketing is really kind of go across different divisions. And this is a mock-up of a, of a campaign that a, that a customer ran. And this is using product data to go create fantastic case studies to go land other divisions. So you can think of this as these are private case studies. You, you don't, you're not going to publish them. Since you're not publishing them on the website and you're, you're just going to the same division at these companies, you can be way more open about how they're using your product, the results they're seeing, the data, and go land these other divisions. So really think about this as like private case studies. It's a huge investment to do these and to do these well. You really can't do these like you would do a, a public case study. It's not going to land. But to go and create a case study or a presentation to one division and go back to our Microsoft example, it's like, hey, Microsoft Office, I would love to show you how the Windows team is using our software to increase test coverage and save that team 100,000 people hours a year in how they're you know, testing their releases. Do you want to learn more? And I'll even log in and show you how they're using it. These are awesome plays. And again, you can only do this within the same company, but it's a fantastic way to break in. You've done all this work to already be like a preferred vendor or a vendor. You're in the vendor portal for this like big enterprise customer, oftentimes a public company. That's no easy feat. And I think that's just the start of the journey. Whereas for such a long time in my career, this was always the, the end of the journey. I got the deal and I just, I just moved on and I left this to, to sales. But what an awesome opportunity for marketing and account-based marketing and even the product teams to collaborate and really take accounts from, you know, expand accounts 2x or 10x or even more kind of in value. So just to recap, ABM at product-led organizations is all about expansions, driving that expansion, improving NRR, getting to 110% NRR if you can really thinking and driving into the TAM of expansions and driving that, doing that down to an individual customer level. That's how you build your account list. If you're at max TAM on a customer, don't worry about it. Just go to the customers and do account-based marketing to those customers that have more room in their TAM. Utilize product data as uh, your ultimate intent data. Get really, really into the data. Be a total student of it. Go overhaul your onboarding. Go think about how you can arm the BDR teams with the data to give them the information they need to be able to go figure out who to go reach out to and who's logging in and who are the best users that they should go engage with as, as the champions. And then go run some cool plays. Go, uh, go reach out to executives. Show them the, like the manager dashboard. If you don't have a manager dashboard in your product, go build one. Um, they're great. Go do a ABM plays to expand across divisions for really big companies. And it's like, you can only really create those private case studies easily when you have a product like segment, you're getting that data into a dashboard and you've done all this work to break into to the, to the customer. And now, now go do something with it. Go double that TAM, go double that, that contract or, or maybe even see if you can 10 exit because it's, it's totally possible and it's right in front of you.
So thank you everyone. Again, my name is Dave Brigatti. You can always reach me at dave at inflection.io. It's been a, a true pleasure talking about account-based marketing, product-led growth, and kind of the, the blend of the two and, and how you can really maximize expansions and NRR by really understanding what your users are doing and turning that into some really cool ABM plays. So thanks again and farewell.